Hi students, um, I wanted to introduce the concept of superposition. Um, so the idea of superposition um, for solving circuits, we use this for circuits that have more than one power source. Um, so let me introduce it just with um, a simple circuit with two sources, and then um, we can do another example later with three and how to handle that. Um, so here is an example of a circuit um, that we might use superposition to solve. Um, the concept of superposition um, is basically that um, this source is going to make a contribution to um, the power supplied to this resistor and this resistor. And this source is going to make a contribution to the power supplied to these resistors. So if we consider um, one source at a time, um, and then we can add both contributions to get the total power delivered to um, these resistors. Uh, so superposition is kind of like, um, it boils down to just basically adding. Um, we're gonna add both contributions from these two sources. Um, so generally the process is we're going to just consider one source at a time. So that means we want to turn off the other source, solve the circuit, and then put in that other source and turn off the other one, solve the circuit, and then we're gonna add our two results together. Um, so some rules for turning off sources. Um, the way it works, if we want to turn off this voltage source, um, the way we remove it from a circuit, so I'll say to remove a voltage source, we're going to replace it with a wire. Okay, so basically a short circuit. Replace with short circuit. And in parentheses, I'll put, that's just a wire. So we're gonna replace this with a wire. If we're going to remove a current source, to remove a current source, we're going to replace it with an open circuit. So um, basically an open wire. Replace with open circuit. So in other words, um, we can just remove the current source. Okay, so um, we don't want to remove both, both sources at once. We want to remove one at a time um, for this example that has two sources in it. Okay, so um, let me show you how this works. So let's do an example with two sources. So suppose um, this is our circuit, we've got two power sources. I'll let um, the voltage source be called V1, and let's let it be six volts. Suppose this is an eight ohm resistor, this is a four ohm resistor, and suppose this is I1, the current source, and I'll let that be three amps. Now, what we're interested in is we want to find this voltage drop across the four ohm resistor, okay? So I'll label that as V0 or V out. And um, to do that, the first step is we're going to, let's turn off this current source and just look at the circuit with V1 in. Okay, so step one, solving a circuit using superposition, is we're going to turn off I1 by replacing it with an open circuit. Okay, so I basically just take it out. So that means my circuit that I'm gonna consider just has V1 in it and these two resistors in series. So that's my eight ohm resistor, my four ohm resistor, and V1 is six volts. Okay, great. Um, so if I'm gonna solve a simple series circuit like this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find R equivalent. Since these are in series, that's just gonna be eight plus four, which is 12 ohms. Once I know R equivalent, I can use Ohm's law. V equals IR. Our V is our voltage source. Our R is our R equivalent that we just found. And we're gonna solve for the current 
that's going through this circuit. Um, so this is going to be 6 divided by 12, so that gives me 0.5 is equal to I. So now I have the current going through this 4 ohm resistor, so that means I can use Ohm's law again to find the voltage drop V0 that I was interested in. Okay, so I'll say then V0 is equal to that I times the resistor that I is going through that I'm interested in, the 4 ohm resistor is the one that V0 is, um, is the voltage drop across. So I times 4 ohms, the I I just found was 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 4 gives me 2 volts. Okay, so 2 volts is my V0 if I'm considering the circuit to only have V1 in it. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do, my step two, now I'm going to put back this I1 and I'm going to turn off V1. Okay, so I'm just considering one source at a time. So to turn off V1, since it's a voltage source, I'll look over here at my rules, to rem remove a voltage source, I'm going to replace that with a short circuit. Okay, so my circuit that I want to consider for step two with just the current source in it, I'm going to replace the V1 source with just a wire. And then I'm going to put back in my I1 source. So there's three amps, four ohms, I'm interested in this V0, and that's eight ohms. Okay, so the same circuit here, this is the full circuit, um, but now I'm considering it with just the current source in, not the voltage source, but in order to take it out, I have to replace it with a wire. Okay, cool. So um, this thing here, it might look like this is a series circuit, but it's actually a parallel circuit. And if you imagine, if you took this 8 ohm resistor and you kind of slid it down, then you would see if I slide this down, then it will, it's clearly in parallel with the 4 ohm resistor. Okay, so to find our equivalent for a parallel circuit like this, our equivalent is going to be 1 over 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. So that is going to give me 8 thirds ohms. So I can replace this network of two parallel resistors with one resistor of value 8 over 3. And this is in parallel with my current source, my 3 amp current source. Okay, so that means I know the current that's going through that R equivalent that means I can find the voltage that is supplied to my source. Okay, so I'm going to use Ohm's law. V is equal to I1 times R equivalent. So my I1 is 3 amps. I'm going to multiply that by 8 thirds, and that gives me 8 volts is equal to um, the V. So let's back up a little bit. Um, what exactly is that V? Well, I replaced these two resistors with this one, right? So um, if I'm delivering 8 volts to um, in parallel with this 4 ohm resistor and the 8 ohm resistor, but I can replace this with just this one, that means that this is actually V0 as well. So I hope you guys can see that because this is actually, we know that it's really this parallel network here, but if I replace these two parallel resistors with one resistor, then that means that the voltage across this equivalent will also be the voltage across this, will also be a voltage across this since they're in parallel. Okay, well, that's nice. That means that I have my eight volts, that's V0, when I have just I1 in the circuit. Okay, so now I'm ready for my final step. Step three, this is the fun part. We just add up all the contributions. All the contributions. And when I say contributions, I mean that um, two volts is the contribution to V0 from this voltage source. Eight volts is a contribution to V0 from this current source. 
So that means that V0 kind of total is going to be the sum of V0 due to V1 and V0 due to I1. Okay, so this is two volts plus eight volts. That means that my V0 for reals is 10 volts. So 10 volts is the voltage that is supplied to this resistor um, from both of these power sources. And the way we found them is we just evaluated um, one source at a time. Now, um, I'd like to show you, since we just talked about linearity, how we um, use linearity to help us, once we have done all the work to solve this circuit, how we can make things easier um, if the source values change, okay? So linearity and superposition kind of um, go hand in hand. So a lot of times um, while you are solving a circuit using superposition, you might be asked to um, say what this voltage drop or you know whatever current that we're looking for through a particular resistor would be if our sources were to change. Um, so linearity is about finding V out in terms of V in, right? Um, if we have a current source, that would be V out in terms of the current source, okay? So this is the goal. Um, if we found an expression for V out in terms of this V in, then we can actually come up with two equations with two different scale factors. Okay, so let's do this for when we just had V, um, V1 in the circuit which was six volts. And then let's do this when we just had I1 in the circuit, which was three amps. So what do we get for V out when we just had V in, V1 in? Well, we got two volts. And so we can express that as K times our input voltage was six volts. So that means that K is equal to one third. So our input voltage V1 was scaled by one third to give us V out. Um, now, when we consider the circuit with just the current source in, our expression for V out in terms of I in would be um, our V out we got was 10 volts is equal to K times our I in was three amps. So our scale factor ended up being um, I'm sorry, it wasn't 10, it was eight. Eight over three. Okay, great, so we've got two different scale factors. This means that our current source I in is scaled by eight thirds to give us our V out. So our overall equation for V zero is going to be um, K one times V one plus, this is our second scale factor, K two times I one. And we can double check this with what we, um, the calculation that we just did. V out is one third when V in is six volts. And then eight thirds when I in is three. So this gives us two plus eight, which is 10 volts. So that is indeed what we um, got. So we can use linearity to verify our answer. The other thing we can do is we can say find V0 when, let's say, V1 is equal to 5 volts instead of 6 volts, and when I1 is equal to 2 amps instead of 3 amps. Okay, so these values, we can interchange anything once we have um, our equation. So our equation that we derived was 1 third times V1 plus 8 thirds I1. Okay, so where these are the scale factors that we determined individually when we considered one source at a time. So this is gonna be one third times, now instead of six volts for V1, V1's now changed to five volts, so I put a five in there, plus eight thirds. Now instead of three amps for I1, I'm gonna put in two amps, because I'm asked to see what the V out would be if I changed my current source as well. So this gives me 5 thirds plus 16 thirds, which is 21 thirds or seven volts. 
And um, you can verify this answer um, using superposition or even simulating this in multi-sim. So um, next I'll do a video and show you how to, um, superposition and linearity works when we have three sources instead of two.